Hi everyone, my name is Janice and this is my Strategies for Gifted Students presentation. So, um, a little bit about gifted students. Um, who are they? Well, they're generally those students or individuals who have evidence of high performing assessments or other capabilities that they have such as intellectual abilities, creative, artistic abilities, leadership capacities, um, or specific academic skills. Um, they generally, like I said, have higher achievement scores. Um, they're creative thinkers. Sometimes they often have um, a type of perfectionism um, and they can also be classified as twice exceptional, which those are students who are considered gifted and those with also a learning disability. Um, something like ADHD or um, Asperger's and um, a little fact I thought was interesting according to the National Association for Gifted Children academically gifted and talented students in this country make up for approximately six to ten percent of the total school population so think about that and think about how many students you would have in your own classroom at least one um, that's going to be a gifted student. Um, additionally, the high performances are determined by the school districts. Um, they're the ones who have their academic criterion and um, who assess who makes into their GATE programs. And um, like I said, each district is different, so there's a lot of unreliability in that. Um, in the sense that um, there's different criterion involved. So what actually makes a gifted student in one district could be completely um, d different in another district. Um, additionally, they have um, socio-emotional needs, um, generally showing signs of heightened uh, sensitivity. So they could be sensitive to sound or lights, um, noises, um, people being close in their area, um, thanks to that perspective. Um, they also have extra perception, so um, they pay attention to the small differences and those are the differences that are considered important to them. Um, they have greater levels of complexity, um, they prefer abstract thinking and higher involvement. So um, they like pictures, patterns, concerns, um, problems. They like to be involved in the abstract and, and complex thinking. Um, Ascronic, I can't even pronounce this. I probably should have checked that out before, but sorry, so I'll try it again. Um, asynchronous development is often shown in gifted students. And what that means is basically they're developing at different rates. Um, we all have physical, we have cognitive, we have emotional. Um, there's all different ways that we can develop and gifted students generally develop differently um, depending on the um, depending on their on their situation, I guess you could say. Um, they also have a dis additional characteristics and traits. Um, I won't read them all, but they like to work alone. They have vivid imagination. Um, they remember what they learned, and they generally remember it for a longer period of time. Um, they learn faster. Or they learn earlier at different ages. Um, sometimes they're often associated with negative behaviors, like they resist doing their homework or classwork. They come frustrated basically at the class pace. Um, so if the class is moving slower, then they're going to get um, anxious. They're going to want to get up and rebel a little bit. Um, they can sometimes act out as a class clown or resist taking directions and refuse to conform. So um, there are negative behaviors that are associated with it as well. Uh, additionally, strategies for gifted learners, um, same strategies that you would use to indiv individualize instruction for any student, but um, there's additional things that you can do as well. So
So um, group learning, cooperative learning, um, strate strategically place them in groups, obviously because they do have group issues sometimes working within a group and they, they tend to want to work alone. Um, there are gifted programs you can enroll them in, um, accelerated learning, extending reading activities, writing activities, projects, um, things of that nature, self-selected um, independent study, and um, you can do interest inventories to determine what their interests are and maybe get them involved in something um, going that way. And just make sure overall that you provide them with quality instruction um, differentiating that instruction, compacting the curriculum to condense um, as much as you can um, to keep up with the needs of gifted learners. Um, just a little side note, famous people that were noted as twice exceptional um, also had a learning disability as well. Um, were people like Albert Einstein, Walt Disney, Tom Cruise, Robin Williams, Leonardo da Vinci and um, George Washington so I thought that was pretty interesting um, some of the extension activities could also be involved in researching these individuals as well so um, a couple last facts um, things that teachers should keep in mind like I said before is to individualize student needs so make sure their needs are being met as well as other students um, quality instruction, numerous qualitative assessments, that's um, obviously important. Making sure that the assessments are um, appropriate and they're able to assess what we're looking for. Um, also, the support for socio-emotional needs um, within groups, within outside resources, thing to that effect. And um, lastly, extended resources, so also community resources or program resources, things that things outside that um, could help them as well. So a couple of different resources are the National Association of Gifted Children and the California Department of Education. Um, if you click on their link and go to specialized programs, you will also find information under the gifted and talented. So um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I thank you for watching.